Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I am your host, Kevin, here with Angry Snowboarder for a review of the Rossignol Sushi Lite. So this board has Rossignol's Antec Elite. It is 30% rocker in the nose, camber from insert to insert, and then just 10% little micro rocker in the tail, just enough to be there, basically. This board is only available in a 144. So I rode this with two different sets of bindings. I rode it with my K2 Lean ATs, and some older Flow Freeballer FS's. So the Freeballers are a no high back binding from Flow that they used to make that I still ride because they're ridiculous and I love them. And Lean AT is just kind of one of my go-to bindings to test up with. And I was wearing my DC Tuck Knees in a size eight. I rode this at Keystone primarily. Um, turns out the front side of Keystone has lots of good stuff. If you know where to go, too bad you don't. And I rode it in PAL, I rode it on a little bit of hard pack, but mostly deep snow. I got to ride this thing in March, which if you were paying attention to Colorado conditions in March at all, we got a ridiculous amount of snow. So I got to ride this in a ton of PAL. It's supposed to be a PAL deck, so I got to ride it basically in the exact conditions it needed to be in. It was sometimes a little bit warmer PAL, a little bit heavier. Uh, so I got a little bit of those kind of variable conditions where in the morning it was a lot more blower. As it started to heat up throughout the day, it got a little heavier, a little chunkier. So the entire category of ultra volume shift boards like the Sushi that sit under that 150 range for guys my size are all relatively stiff, they have to be. Now within that range, the Sushi tends to land a little bit on that softer end of that spectrum. So compare it to all your other boards in the wall and this is going to feel stiffer. Compare it to all those other boards sub 150 and it's going to be a little bit on the softer side compared to all those similar style boards. It has a little bit of a reverse directional flex to it. so. The nose is supposed to be a little bit stiffer than the tail. Now, just with the way everything's built when you're riding it, it basically evens out the flex a little bit. So the tail, with how short it is, because there's nothing back there to flex, ends up feeling just a hair stiffer than the nose. But it would feel drastically different if it didn't have that reverse directional flex. And what that really does is it keeps the nose from being useless and flappy out there. Um, that's what really stiffening up the nose did for it. And then between the feet, middle of the road flex for the most part. It's not, you know, overbearing. You can get into the board a little bit and it actually does have a little bit of torsional flex. And that's definitely one of the things that separates Sushi from a lot of the other ultra volume shift boards is most of them don't have too much torsional flex. They're just too wide to really get that. So Sushi does still maintain a little bit of that. And some of that is due to the light frame that's in there, which you can't really see. Sometimes in the light, you can actually see it, but it's strips of urethane basically that you can kind of see through the light a little bit uh, if you get it up into the light and it helps lighten up the board and it also just adds a little bit of torsional give to it is kind of what I found. So the stability on this is there, kinda. It's basically a skipping stone. It cross any sort of variable terrain. It doesn't have enough power or stiffness to really push through any of that terrain or variable snow. So it just kind of rides on top of it. It does an okay job at that, to be completely honest. And as long as you're somebody that has some decent board control, it's not uncontrollable. You can direct it, you can really point it in the direction you wanna go. And as long as that direction is somewhat vague across variable terrain, then you're gonna get there and you're gonna be fine and you're not gonna die. In soft snow, it's great. It, you know, it does its job. It's a pow deck. It, you know, has plenty of stability. It turns great. Pushing fast through soft snow, it doesn't buckle uh, as you're pushing through turns or anything. So in soft snow, it's great. Variable terrain is really where it kind of falters as far as stability. So the ollie and snap out of this board basically comes entirely from you. There's no tail here. So you gotta load up the tail and little teeny quick snaps and you can get a little bit of pop out of this guy, but anything more than that, and there's just no tail to push off of. So the ollie and snap that you get out of this, you can kind of load the center of the board a little bit to get a little bit extra snap right off your back foot. So just know that going into it, that you're not gonna be boosting to the moon on this thing. It is for slashing pow, it's not for boosting. So trying to butter this thing, you have no tail, just like I just talked about in ollie and a pop. So, there's nothing really to butter back there. Now doing wheelies and stuff through PAL, sure. But as far as like actually buttering on hard pack, there's not really a tail back there to butter. So you can kind of just lean into it a little bit. It's about as much as you're ever gonna get. In deep snow, it's super fun. It slashes really good. And the nose is really where you've got all that surface and all that, that stuff basically to throw your butters into. So deep snow, it's really great. You can really lay over that nose. There is a lot of it. It's both wide and long so you've got a lot of surface out there despite this only being a 144 to really butter on a deep snow then even in soft snow because 
this board does have a little bit of torsional flex still to it, you can actually lay into the butters a little bit on the nose. You can actually get it to spread some love out there and it's not bad. Keeping your weight centered is the key to trying to carve this thing. If you get your weight too far back over your back foot, it's just gonna wash out. There's just not enough torsional stiffness and not enough tail period to really lay into a turn and push off that turn off your back foot. So if you keep it centered, engage the camber that's between your feet, you can get it to turn, it turns decent, but this is the light version. Technically, I'm actually overweight on this board. So if I'm pushing it too hard, it would buckle and it was just a little unruly on carves, especially on hard pack and variable terrain. It just didn't like to hold its line. It was just, just I was just overpowering basically the whole board. So. It is carvable. If you're a lighter rider, you're definitely going to have a better time on it than me just because you're not really putting the same amount of pressure down through the side cut on it. But it can turn. Just keep your weight centered on it. Who is this board for? Lighter riders, women, anybody sub like 140 pounds that doesn't have a size like 10 or 11. Uh, just because that tail is a little narrower. This is a little bit of a narrower version compared to the now sushi wide. Personal thoughts? Uh, it's just not really for me. I'm not usually the biggest fan of ultra volume shift boards to begin with. There's just not enough board there and I just feel like there's just not enough effective edge for me to ride how I want to ride it. That said, if you're looking for something to add to your quiver to mine pow in the trees, if you're a lighter rider, if you've had a hard time finding an ultra volume shift board that you don't feel like is overbearing or just too takes too much effort to turn and move around, then this is probably a really good option for you because it doesn't take as much effort as basically any other board in this category that I've ridden and it's super easy to ride and it does float extremely well. And that was definitely the one thing that I was not overweight on was its flotation. I was able to float just fine in the waist deep, knee deep snow that we were getting during March, even though it's 144 and I'm like 20 pounds overweight on this board. So if you're looking for that a little bit smaller board, it's definitely a solid option for you if you're on the lighter side. Comparable boards are gonna be the Marhar Woodsman, the Libtex Short Fat, and the Spring Break Slush Slasher. Thanks for watching. This has been my thoughts and the review of the Rossignol Sushi Light. What did you think? Did I nail it? What are your thoughts on this? Did you have any further questions? Let's have a conversation about it. While you're doing that, make sure you're clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notifications when these videos are coming out. And if you're really interested in supporting us and growing this, check out Angry Snowboarder VIP. It's the best way to support us and keep this stuff going. I can tell you more about it, but there's a video that's got way better info and way clearer info than I'm gonna be able to give you. Thanks for watching and come back and check us in the next review.